Why the a-hole for telling my soon-to-be mother-in-law that my engagement ring is cursed? I, female 26, just got engaged. My soon-to-be mother-in-law is a nightmare. We are currently renovating a part of our place, and she has been lent a key in the meantime because she keeps coming over uninvited under the guise of helping clean up. But she really just likes to snoop and interfere. I do a martial art and take my engagement ring off before class. I came home from an afternoon class one day and my engagement ring was not in the jewelry dish that I usually leave it in. I asked her about it, and she told me that she'd taken it to a jeweler to get it cleaned. She looked super smug about it, and when I asked her which jeweler, she pretended she couldn't remember. I didn't want to give her the satisfaction of having a reaction to it, so I just let it slide for a couple of days. A couple of days passed that I asked her about it again and she's super vague, still pretending she can't remember which jeweler and saying she's too busy to go pick it up anytime soon. So I said, wow, I really feel for that jeweler. Hope nothing happens to her. She asked what I meant, and I told her that my superstitious Brazilian grandmother had performed some traditional ritual on it that's usually known to curse anyone who takes or handles the ring other than the owner. She looked uneasy and asked me a couple more questions about this ritual, and I made some story up about how my mother's ring had been taken by a burglar who was crushed by a pillar of cement on his way out of the house. I totally made this entire ritual up, and I do have a Brazilian grandmother, but obviously she did not do some ritual to my ring. The next day, my fiancé told me that while I was out, she was there to clean up a bit, and lo and behold, I get home, she had already left, and find my ring where I had left it. It didn't even look any cleaner than it had before, lol. A week later, I received an abusive call from her, saying she'd been in a minor car accident and she was blaming me at my witch doctor grandmother, saying she was now cursed for having touched it. I passed the phone to my fiancé to try to calm her down, but she was hysterical. I told my fiancé what I told her and she scolded me a bit because we both know how she is and I should have known she'd react this sort of way. It's been another week since then and she refuses to talk to me and keeps slandering me to my fiancé. Overall, he sort of recognizes how ridiculous she's being, but the drama of the situation is making me wonder if the whole cursed tale was taking it a bit too far. So, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. That's hilarious. The nerve of her. Taking your ring. She deserves the curse. I'm just sorry it's causing trouble for you. I kind of think your fiancé earned it by tolerating her behavior, not having changed the locks already. Also, have you checked your ring? I don't understand why I should take it unless it was to keep it away from you. Does she approve of the engagement? Or of you taking it off even if it's for a good reason? Was she going to swap stones or claim to have lost it? I'd really need to know her motivation for taking it. You might want to come clean before she meets your grandmother at the wedding though. She's never vocally disagreed with engagements, but she has definitely interfered. I personally think it was just to mess with me or keep it for me. I really don't know. I don't think she ever even took it to a jeweler to be honest. You should tell her there's no way she could have even been cursed, since she took the ring with good intentions, and a curse only curses people with bad intentions. The reason you were worried about the jeweler is because some jewelers will steal rings and swap them out for fake stones. And you didn't know how honest the jeweler was because you didn't know them at all. I'll bet she chokes on her own lies rather than admit she stole it to steal it. This is an excellent idea. I'm definitely going to do this. Thank you. Not today, Hall. She stole your engagement ring. Making up a story is the least you could have done to her. Especially when she clearly made up the story about the cleaning. I've had my engagement ring cleaned, and it takes two minutes, and you definitely don't need to leave it at a jeweler. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not letting my sister be a bridesmaid? I, 27 female, and my sister, 27 female, are identical twins. She has been told by almost everyone that she is the more beautiful one. My parents favor her more and will do anything that she asks. I used to be jealous of her when I was younger, but quickly got over it. She went off to attend college and got engaged after graduating. I wasn't invited to her wedding. She told me it was because they were having food that I couldn't eat. My parents threw her a huge wedding that cost hundreds. She and her ex went through a ton of hard times. I tried to be there for moral support, but each time she pushed me away. I'm now engaged to my fiancé, 28 female. Her parents offered to help with wedding expenses, while my parents wanted nothing to do with our wedding. My sister found out we were engaged and started begging me if she could be bridesmaid. I told her no, but that she would receive an invite. She blew up on the phone at me that I was choosing friends over family and that she deserved to be a bridesmaid. My parents called me and told me to let my sister be a bridesmaid. Am I the a-hole for not letting my sister be a bridesmaid? Not today, a-hole. Tell her that you have food she can't eat. 
She hates lobster. I'll see if they can do a lobster pasta dish. Info, why are you inviting your sister and your parents to the wedding? They don't seem to want to be part of your life unless it's to benefit them. This. Why does their opinion even matter? Opie, you deserve so much better. At this point, I wouldn't even invite her. She sounds like the type who would just go for attention-seeking. My fiancé thought the same thing. Not they home. She keeps acting like a cow. She might not even get an invite to the wedding because you were having people food. Your parents are showing their favoritism. I am betting they didn't call her to push for inviting you to her wedding. I contacted them about the wedding, and they told me that it was cancelled and was being rescheduled. Wow. So they were actively engaged in you not getting an invite, and then they used subterfuge to ensure that you wouldn't go. I would be tempted to let them know that you are eloping, and then have a wedding with only inviting friends. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for letting my mom die? My mom has aggressive stage 4B ovarian cancer. I found out she was suddenly declining and flew down to see her. When I arrived, I lay down in the bed next to her, and we had a wonderful 30-minute, totally cogent conversation that I will forever be grateful for. But she was in a bad shape and getting worse, fast. Refusing food, refusing water, refusing pills. Her husband is a conspiracy theorist and thinks hospice is a scam, so he won't call. And my mom, the sweetest lady ever, and won't contradict him. I extended my trip and took on more of the care. I'll spare details, but it's clear to me that she's getting ready to go. She just wants rest and quiet, and someone to lie there with her. So that's what I do. But her husband and friends are accusing me of sabotaging her, encouraging her to give up. Every time I step out of the bedroom, the husband is on me. You gotta get her to eat. Go back in and get her to eat. Then last night, husband invited eight people over, without mom's knowledge, including two young kids. I try to keep everyone quiet, but no one listened. In the kitchen, one of my mom's friends grabs me and says, If your mom is feeling up to it, I want to take you all out for lunch. I stare at her, but she adds, Well, you can come too. I just think your mom needs something to look forward to. And it won't be hard. She can just sit out on a patio and enjoy pizza with us. I'm so angry that I'm shaking. But I managed to politely say, Ma'am, my mom hasn't been able to walk without seizing in three days. She can't leave the bed. She's refusing food. Do you understand what I'm saying? The woman glares at me and says, All the more important that we get something good, meaning pizza, I guess, in front of her. Fast forward to the end of the night, I crawl into bed with mom, who looks upset. Mom, so loud. They were so loud. Me, I'm sorry, I should have stopped them. But I think your husband enjoyed the company. Mom, too loud. Me, okay, I'll try to keep things quiet. Do you feel comfortable telling husband that you didn't like it? Just then, her husband walks in as I'm prepping a procedure. Husband. Hey, baby. Did you enjoy that? Mom. No, not really. Husband. Not really? Belly laugh. Yes, you did. Mom. No, I really didn't. Husband. See the kids aggravated you? That's how you know you liked it. Laughs. Incandescent rage. But yelling will just upset mom more. So I don't. Am I wrong for wanting mom to go if she wants to? She was the most spunky, full-of-life person I ever knew. She would not want to live like this. But everyone here seems to think I'm pushing her towards death. It's destroying me that my mom is dying. But this is about her peaceful transition, not my grief, right? So am I the a-hole for not trying harder for her to stay? Now for the comments. She's dying. Eating and drinking are no longer important as they won't stop her from passing. Let her go how she wants. Too often people project their own feelings and make the process miserable. I had a family member pass from being unable to eat or drink anymore without aspirating on it. It was difficult, tragic, and very sad. But there was an acceptance. Their body was shutting down and there was only so much modern medicine could do. We put them on comfort care but were ultimately unable to get them to come home before they passed. It sounds like your mom's husband is just in denial. It likely unable to comprehend just how terminal your mom actually is. It sounds like you're the only one around listening to and respecting her wishes. Watching a loved one die is incredibly hard. And unfortunately, it sounds like her husband is not coping well with it, so he is in denial. I am sorry, Obi. She's suffering. She's seizing. She can't eat, etc. She's ready to let go. And that's her choice to make. You are doing what you can to be there for her, and that's fantastic. However, understand that other people aren't going to be as accepting of their friend and loved ones passing away. That's why you're getting pushed back. 
Some people just can't accept that someone they love is going to pass. They want to think if they just eat a little and get outside more, they'll get better. It's denial. It happens. It's frustrating, but at the same time, in a way, it's complimentary. Because they care about someone and just can't accept that they may leave this mortal realm. You are doing the right thing because this is what your mom wants. I wish her husband allowed her into hospice, though. That makes him a bit of an a for his conspiracy crap. You're really right. I couldn't see it as a facet of their denial, but it absolutely is. Thank you. Next story. Am I the a-hole for getting a part-time job even though I agreed to be a stay-at-home mom and my ex is giving me mom support? So my ex has a very particular idea of how a child should be raised. One of the things he didn't want to budge on was his belief that a mom should stay home with her children until at least when the children are in full-time education. And even then, he thinks they should only work during school hours so they are home when their children are. At first, I was 100% against this because it put me in a very vulnerable situation. However, the first week after giving birth, I had a change of heart and I ended up signing a contract with my ex where I would effectively be a stay-at-home mom and he would give me mom support. But then a few months ago, I was offered an amazing part-time work from home position through a friend. Honestly, it was too good for me to turn down. And I had been having doubts about what I had agreed to since our son was a year old. He's almost four. My ex was my sole income, and he owns the house I'm living in, so he has a lot of power over my life. So much so that sometimes when discussing things about our son, I would concede to his wants because I didn't want to rock the boat. I didn't tell my ex because I knew he wouldn't like it, and I didn't think the role would interfere with me caring for our son since it was only 20 hours a week. Unfortunately, our son said something that made my ex figure it out. My ex was furious. He wanted me to quit immediately, and when I said no, he said I could either quit or we could work this out through the courts. He said I had breached our contract and said I was being selfish since he was taking care of my every needed want. And he said I was a fool since he doubted my job was paying me better than what he was giving me. So I had no excuse to not focus my time and energy on our son. Am I the a-hole? You need legal advice and someone legit to look at the contract. Don't put this here. Guess what? He legally owes you child support and you're allowed to work. Great news! Signing this contract is some next-level narcissistic control behavior on his part. And honestly, it's strange. You need to get some legal advice ASAP. You're not at home. If she signs a contract saying she would not work in exchange for a stipend, potential above the child support would be, and free housing, she may not be allowed to work. It is time for legal advice. Not today home. Also, I highly doubt any court of justice would consider this contract valid. You can't force a person to not work. Many companies have been making their employees sign a non-compete agreement, and there have been more and more people contesting those. And from what I saw, the company always lose. The worst that will happen, he will stop paying you. Then you can sue him for child support. So he'll have to pay anyway, and you can start working. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not watching my nephew while my sister goes on vacation? Back at the start of 2020, I-24 female agreed to watch my sister's 28th female son, whom I'll call Joe, for male, while she went a week-long vacation with her boyfriend. Joe is a great kid to get along with well, and I had, and have, absolutely no problem watching him. But as you might imagine, she didn't end up going in that vacation, so I never watched Joe. Fast forward a year and a half. My sister and her boyfriend have decided to go on their vacation now, and she asked me to watch Joe for her again. But now there's a problem. I got a pandemic puppy, Charlie, last year, and my sister is irrationally afraid that Charlie will attack Joe if they're together for too long. Charlie and Joe have been together many times, and there has never been a problem, so I don't understand her fear. Charlie's a very sweet dog. He did growl at Joe once, but even my sister admitted that Joe was bothering him too much, and Charlie would never ever bite anyone. My sister expects me to take Charlie to a kennel for a week they'll be gone. I am unwilling to do this, as, first of all, I can't afford it. And second, Charlie's never been apart from me for more than a few hours. My sister told me that I should have no problem being apart from Charlie if she doesn't have a problem being apart from Joe, but I didn't like that. I told her that I have no problem watching Joe, but Charlie will have to be there. And if she doesn't like that, then I can't watch Joe. She is telling me that no one else is able to watch Joe and that it can't go on their vacation as it's meant to be romantic. She is saying that I'm ruining her chance to go on vacation. And to be fair... She hasn't been on vacation in a long time. Am I the a-hole here? Should I board Charlie so I can watch Joe? Not the a-hole. He can't go on their vacation as it's meant to be romantic. Boo freaking who. 
The priority is the kid. My grandparents took my dad and uncle, 6 and 10 at the time, on their honeymoon because their boy dad couldn't be bothered to hire a babysitter while he was at work. Parents do for their kids, period. Stand your ground and take that to be fair she hasn't been on vacation in a long time mentality out of your head. There are millions of people who haven't been on vacation. It's her responsibility to find someone to watch her son if the environment you're providing isn't up to her standards. It's absolutely ridiculous that she wants you to put your sweet dog in a kennel. Don't make excuses for her, because you'll only validate what she is saying. There are hundreds of millions of people who have never been on a vacation. Your circumstances changed, so that old I'll watch Joe obligation no longer applies. I would be extra careful of Joe being around Charlie in the future. A growl is a warning sign, and every dog can bite when provoked. Watch out. I am always careful with them. I know even the sweetest dog can bite, but I really do think Charlie would have to be provoked. I guess mostly worried about Joe not understanding Charlie's boundaries, but they would never be left alone for more than a second.